Good morning everybody, how are we doing? We're in sunny, and it is very sunny at the minute, sunny Doncaster. And we've got a bit of a different one today because we are taking off a 15 year old system and giving it all a good clean. But we are also clearing out a lot of pigeons um, and just cleaning the entire roof. Now, after this video, if you are interested in solar PV and you do not want to add bird protection, then I don't know what's wrong with you because this is a, an absolute testament as to what you need to take into account if you are not adding bird protection on your solar panels from day one because this is disgusting. Thanks very much for joining us. Let's get into another video and let me show you what we've got on this roof. So me and Josh are up on the roof. See, we've already got some panels off, um, mainly because I want to show you what the devastation is like underneath these underneath these panels. This is not a job we are looking forward to doing, but it's one that is very, very important to the customer because this system hasn't really been properly working and the pigeons are an absolute nuisance. You can see the roof is directly underneath two bedrooms and as soon as you have pigeons nesting, you can just hear them um, and they start very early in the morning. So it can wake you up. So I'll take you up there now and I'll show you what we're on with. Right, up on the scaffold. And are you ready for this? Because this is something else. Let me spin you around and show you. Da, 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 da. Absolutely full to bursting, and this is what happens when the take the pigeons take hold inside and underneath panels. I learned that pigeons um, don't have waterproof feathers, so they need to find places to to nest and stay when it's wet. And these sort of systems are perfect for them because they've got the rails to stop to build the nests up against. The panels provide the waterproof protection and also it's warm behind the panels because of the glass. So it's like a perfect environment and it's narrow enough that other predators can't get in. So, but this is what you get. This is what you get for um, when you don't add the bird protection all the way around. Like this is a very early system and most of the early systems never had bird protection put on at the same time. So I'm not blaming this customer for this, but any new customers that decide not to get bird protection or any companies that are offering bird protection, this is the reality of what it could look like in five, 10 years time. So yeah, and other things like, um, I can't show you on this one, but some of these plugs have corroded because they're just covered in bird mess. Um, so there's some of these MC4s have got to change as well. So yeah, this is the reality. So what we're doing up here is we're basically going to chain, we're going to uh, clean all this out, make it all nice again. Obviously we won't clear the gutters out at the end. Um, or Josh will. <laughs> and, and then we'll, uh, we're going to clean all these panels and then we're going to bird mesh all the way up here. So we've th th we've cleared this middle section for two reasons. So one, obviously, so we can clean all this rubbish out, but also so we can um, take the, do the bird protection and do the cleaning because it's three panels high, as you can see. So it's quite high for us to get up. So we're going to um, bird mesh all the way up and then we can infill this bottom part. And when all these are back on, then just bird mesh along the bottom. But we're going to put some new DC cables in as well. Um, I'll show up in the loft shortly as to what, what there is up there. But we're going to put some new DC cables in and then uh, wire this in two strings um, as it kind of is but I'll explain that when I go up into the loft. But anyway, you ready Josh? We're gonna do it? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's crack on. So that is Pigeon's house all clean now. Um, yeah, that's, it was weird that, that was kind of like disgusting, but 
are equally quite therapeutic because it was, it was you can see your progress. But like when you watch um, those cleaning video, uh, the cleaning videos online or on TV. Um, but anyway, so Josh's got some more clean water now, and I'll uh, I'll spin you around and show you what the next course of action is. So Josh's got some uh, two buckets of clean water here. So we're going to take this little yellow one up, put some solid PP cleaner in, take that up, and we're going to we're just going to hand wash these these top six because we can get right on top of them. So we don't necessarily need the faff of this big brush. Uh, which is nice and then once those are all washed and cleaned we're going to get the new these new dc cables in that josh and paddy have pulled in and uh, get all those cables secured and then uh, we can burn mesh kind of on the top there and down on each side there's a nest um and a load of other debris under there that's all empty um that i'm just gonna lift up but i'm gonna just get the the mesh down to this side first um but yeah all this is now clean apart from the gutter i'm gonna do that right at the end um yeah making good progress so crack on and uh, clean this top set of panels right so uh, we're on with josh shall we clean some of those they're looking better already um so we've got these these two to do here and a bit on this one um and i'm just remaking some of these ends so i've cut the old plug off uh this side you can see it's here um looking a bit worse for wear so and then this is the old string cable that we pulled out as well so yeah just decided to uh, remake those on so there's gonna be this this opportunity that i've got to do it so might as well do it and um yeah and remade these on and this is our new string cable for this string and this is uh, the panel cable so i'm gonna Put them, uh, mate them together, and then cable tie them up onto the uh, onto the rails so they're up off the, off the tiles. So we have got a bit of progress. We've got these top piles cleaned, and then I've got a little bit of messed about on the burr protection there. But the burr protection goes all the way up and around. You can see, it just ends there at the minute. So we've got it up and over. So now we are going to make sure these are all cable tied. Um, one here, make these cables all neat, and then we're going to infill this section here, which will liven this set of uh, nine panels up, and then we'll have this other set of nine here, which will then go on afterwards. Paddy's got these safely into the isolator inside in the loft, so uh, they're all safe to go. And then once we've got these in, he can test polarity, make sure he's got the right way around. So me and Josh are making progress. We've got these this are last panel of this second row this middle row that's going on um we're just as we go we're just changing any mc4s that look a bit suspect there's a few that broke whilst we, we were taking them out um whilst we take the panels off so we're just changing a few that we've now seen as well and just cable tying the cables up and everything like that so yeah everything follows a process the process we're on at the minute is just re cable tying and re terminating these M24s. So, about to start clearing this gutter out and uh, yeah, getting rid of all of this debris that's built up over the last 15 years. There's no way this guttering has ever worked since uh, since these pigeons have moved in. So, um, this should really change. It's, it's unreal how much damage this many birds can do underneath a set of panels. Like, we've scrubbed this roof, but you obviously still see bits and bobs uh, left on there, you know, bird mess, some feathers and all the rest of it. Um, nothing that will damage the roof, but it's just, it's going to be there, trapped underneath these panels now. Uh, but at least we've got rid of everything, so there's good airflow underneath all the panels, and uh, yeah, it's a bit nicer. So I'll show you this uh, this gutter and what we're on with. So I'm cracking on with this. As you see, that bit's, that's the bit I've filled in my debris bag. And this is... This is the meatloaf. <laughs> it's just absolutely stacked. So it's coming out nice and easy um, because it's also damp underneath, which I hope you're not eating anything whilst you're watching this. But um, yeah, we go all the way along there and then give this all a good wash out. And I've just got to, I might have to take the edge off that, the end off that, um, the spout off that just to try and clear it, or it might just clear some water. Um, yeah, the guys are just getting some MC, new MC4s made on to cover these panels that have, that have broken. Um, not sure if this one's one of them or not, but no, it's all right. Oh yeah, that one's that one's got the end of another one in. You can see how it's kind of 
on the inner side of that it's, it's done basically this part here of a different panels plug inside it so that one's going to need um, changing but we're doing it so that we're not plugging any of these old MC4s into any of our new ones we've changed both sides um, just to make sure we doubly have everything mated together properly but yeah it's coming together all that's uh, all that's meshed up there now and then uh, yeah we'll be only fitting that panel it's these hilti fixings which I've come across a few times it's a bit like uh, for any electricians a bit like kind of uh, channel nuts or zebs into a unit strut um, onto there they've got a really good overhang so they uh, they really grab onto the panel which is good but yeah we're testing each panel that we're putting back on um, just to make sure it's not faulty so yeah all coming together so myself and paddy are just in the loft and we've actually found where these cables come through so the these panels were wired um a little bit unusually to most modern systems where usually on a modern system you have um, say two strings coming through so two pairs of these DC cables however this one was wired in two strings on the roof but then it's a bit dark in here that if you can see then they've gone into these branch connectors to make it a parallel string so you can see we've only got one set of cables coming out the other end of it so we've got two strings up there and one string here um, now I'm not too sure why they've decided to do it like that because um, the old inverter that's in which is that SMA Sunny Boy. Um, they are high voltage inverters, but they could have just taken the two strings straight into that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're trying to reduce the number of connections we've got. So we'll take those branch connectors out, and then they've also MC4 the top of the isolator. So we're going to take those out, and we're just going to pull two new sets of cables in, just so that there's there's not because obviously we've got the MC4s on that side, then the branch connector, then the connection on the out go inside, and then this connection and then the connection's inside there. So we're gonna take all that out. Um, Pad's gonna add another isolator. It's gonna sit just here. And then we're gonna um, he's just re-boot lace, uh, ferruling all the ends of the of the flex, rather than being all the crusty copper ends like we've got here. Um, so it's all nice and neat. And then um, we're gonna wire this in two strings, just so that we've got the, uh, the we're able to then split the strings then, so we can, we can then if there's ever a problem on one set of nine panels then we can isolate that set and allow it to work on the other and vice versa whereas as it is now if there's a problem on any of the panels and the circuit is cut then it, it, it can it could in theory take out all of the all the panels it might still work to a degree because we've got the branch connector there but it just seems better to reduce all these mc4 connections take it back to basics take it into another dc isolator and then put a uh, put our inverter up on up on there we might even put a little bit of fireboard on there just because that is a um a, a combustible surface so yeah we've got uh, a good bit to get on with but uh, yeah this should look a lot different when we get to, when we get this finished <laughs> there he is look so they're all back on now and uh, we're just giving them a final wash off so we've like i say we, we gave them the top ones a good clean when we were up there but these ones are a lot more accessible um <laughs> josh don't break it <laughs> cut <laughs> um but yeah so that's the bird protection on all the way up the sides oh well you can see that it's all the way up the sides all the way on the top one way there and then all the way on this bottom so it's all nice and bird protected now clean gutter as well so yeah ready to rock good job eh <laughs> So I'm up in the loft and um, just come to inspect what Paddy's done. So Patrick, this is his first inverter with us. Um, and let's see if it matches up to the level standard. There it is, in all its glory. So this is uh, this is a really good effort from Pad, to be fair. Um, so we already had the, the board on, the wooden board on, but he's put a piece of fire board um, on there. He doesn't actually have the brass cups yet, so he's used some um, flat washers which is which is good and then is rewired the DC it's got his stickers on there goes through a bit of over conduit up back down along the top and into those uh, DC isolators all been changed for black 20 mils and then he's 
um, clip them around there. It's quite tight in terms of the play that he had, but then a um, little clip on there up into the bottom of the inverter, and then clip on there for his. That was a pre existing uh, cable in there, um, and then he's boot lace ferruled all the all these cables in here to make sure they've got all a good connection and we did the DC testing and everything together so yeah really good effort from pad and um, this is now generating what have we got 120 watts I'll tell you what doing this this time of year is not the one if you want to be impressed by by generation but still it's uh, it's all brand new now and uh, yeah I'm working which is the main thing well there we have it look all 18 of these panels back on, cleaned on top of and below of, all the nests removed, all the feces out of every, <laughs> under the panels and um, out of the guttering. And now it's a bird free zone, bird protection on, all panels cleaned and generating. Not an awful lot because of the time of year we're in, but it is generating and this system is now ready for hopefully many, many years. Might well see, I can hear the pigeons behind me. Where are they? I can't see them. I can hear them cooing. Oh, they're on that house just there. They're just sat on that ridge, just up there. Thinking, well, where am I gonna go now? But there's plenty of other panels on this, uh, this, this estate to go under. But this is the thing about um, getting it installed. Sometimes a package price is not the right system for property just because a, a company has put together a price that is you know 10 panels uh, a 3.6 inverter 10 kilo hours of battery storage doesn't mean that that it's actually right for you it just means that that's what they're selling it at um, so consulting a, the right installer to get that sorted and this isn't an angle that we're the only right installer there's, there's lots and lots of really good installers out there but having some knowledge yourself when you're choosing a solar PV system just means that you potentially don't get caught out with this in five ten years time when a simple bird mesh would have made all the difference to this and then wouldn't have had this problem and we wouldn't be here so yeah I was gonna say I'm thankful that they didn't do it they didn't have bird mesh because I was here but I would have been more happy if they had of because this was not a nice job to undertake but I've got a really good feeling now because we've completely changed what the system is like in terms of its longevity um, and just for it being nice for these people to have now because hearing the birds nesting every single night must have been an absolute nightmare so thanks very much for watching another youtube video from us um, and if you've got any questions about this install or your install or just any questions in general about renewables then please do drop them in the comments and i'll come back to as many as i can thanks very much and we'll see you on the next one <laughs> i was just about to get in the van and look at them all they've all come back I get under. They've literally just been walking up that edge, tapping on the on, tap, tapping on the uh, on the mesh. But that's like half the number that were under there. So yeah, I have to go somewhere else now.